Hey guys, welcome back. And in my last video, I talked about migrating to a new smart home system. And I'm doing just that. Thought about waiting a little while, doing a little bit more research, but I think I did enough research. So I just went ahead and got what I needed. So in this package here, I should have that new smart home system. Let's open it up and see what we have. So here we are, we have Home Assistant Yellow. This is half of what I said I wanted to do. I wanna do Home Assistant paired with Apple's HomeKit. So this is the first step in getting to that goal. Let's see what we have inside. So here we have, looks like some stickers, some Home Assistant stickers. And right over here, we have the Home Assistant Yellow setup guide. Here we have the actual kit. I bought the Home Assistant Yellow with the power supply kit and I bought the Raspberry Pi CM4 module uh, separately. I didn't want the standard kit that um, they sell. I wanted a little bit more power. So I went with this right here. This must be the actual power supply. The different adapters. Power supply is right here. Here are the different adapters for every part of the world. We're most likely going to be using this one right here. I wanted to see if there was any other adapter in there. I got a, a three prong, but it looks like just that two, which is exactly what we need to use. In here as well, you're gonna have your ethernet. And then you have the heat sink, I believe right here. And then lastly, you have just some warranty and safety information. Bottom, bottom, right there. Like I was saying earlier, I did buy the um, kit so it didn't come with the actual Raspberry Pi included. I had to buy that separately. I wanted extra power. I know this is gonna be overkill, but I still wanted to do it this way. So I bought the eight gigabyte RAM and 32 gigabyte onboard memory, but I also bought a one terabyte SSD card to go along with it. So I won't be using the memory that's on here. I was going to be using it here. I did want the eight gigabytes of memory. I know it's probably gonna be overkill, but it is what it is and that's what I wanted to do. So uh, here we got the Raspberry Pi, eight gigabytes, 32 gigs of memory, and the one terabyte SSD that we're also gonna be installing into the actual Home Assistant Yellow. I will link all the stuff that I bought for this particular project down in the description below. I bought mine from Seed Studio. I don't know if I said that yet, but I'll put that down there. It was pretty quick shipping. I think I bought it last Thursday. Yeah, last Thursday, and I got it yesterday, so about a week. Uh, and that's a full week now, you know, counting even Sunday as well, so that was pretty quick. It is one of the websites that Home Assistant has as a distributor, I guess, official distributor for their products, um, and it's one that had the Raspberry Pi module that I wanted. Some of the other ones didn't have that the right specs uh, that I was looking for, and in retrospect, maybe I should have bought the eight gigabyte RAM Lite with no memory. But now I do remember that I think the price difference was like five or $10. So I was like, whatever, like, you know, if it was a bigger price difference, I think I would have uh, taken it more seriously and considered it uh, more. However, I just thought it was easier to just get it all together. I did buy the uh, memory not the memory, sorry, the, the SSD from Amazon, I believe, um, because Seed Studio did not have what I was looking for. They did have a one terabyte for like 64, by, 64 uh, bucks, but I didn't know the brand. It really didn't give me a brand, or maybe it did. I just didn't really look into it too much. So I decided to go with the Samsung one instead um, because I did see in some of the forums and even on the Home Assistant uh, FAQ page that this particular RAM or particular SSD drive does work for this. So I just wanted to play it safe and not make, uh, or have to, you know, not have to get something that doesn't work, had to return it, all that other good stuff. So 
did that. I know I spent more money on it. And I probably did go overboard, but I'm okay with it. Now let's get this all installed and then we'll actually install Home Assistant onto the actual kit when everything is where it needs to be. Let's do it. So we install the Raspberry Pi module onto the Home Assistant Yellow kit. We also install the SSD onto the Home Assistant kit as well. I didn't record any footage of that, uh, but I did follow the instructions that are on the Home Assistant Yellow or the Home Assistant website, I should say, uh, which I will link down in the description below. Very easy to follow, showed you step-by-step -step on how to open it up, get the Raspberry module or the Raspberry Pi module installed, then the hard drive, close it all up. And then we also installed Home Assistant onto the Home Kit or onto the Home Assistant Yellow because it wasn't pre-installed since I bought the Raspberry Pi module separately. I didn't get the kit that has it already installed. There's a couple of different variations of the Home Assistant Yellow kit. You have the standard, which I'll link all the specs here for you. And that one does come pre-installed with Home Assistant. So I'm pretty sure all you have to do is plug it in. Then there is power over internet or power over ethernet, I should say, PoE. Uh, that one there is you just plug in your ethernet cord to your router and then into the Home Assistant yellow and you get power that way. And the kit that I got was the Home Assistant yellow with power supply. I wasn't sure if one is better than the other. I just figured that having the power supply is a better idea. But then I think I read something about if you get the power over ethernet, you can still use power supply. So kind of wish I would have got that one in case I wanted to do one or the other. Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but it also is nice to have one cord over two. That's something I didn't think of uh, when purchasing this until afterwards uh, so now i have two cords one the ethernet and the other one is the power uh, power supply you know minor things but it may or may not matter to you so we installed the home assistant yellow or we installed the home assistant into the uh, home assistant yellow using a usb drive that i got on amazon and it was quite easy to do uh, again, just follow the instructions on the website. There are plenty of videos that you can also use. Uh, I was using one, I forget the name of the channel, but he has a lot of stuff on Home Assistant. Uh, so I used his video in conjunction with the write-up from Home Assistant, uh, the Home Assistant website. So there is not a shortage of information on how to do all this stuff. So that's not what this video is focused on. It's more about, you know, getting to the place where I, I need to get using Home Assistant Yellow and HomeKit. So once we installed Home Assistant onto the, um, the kit, we did what we had to do. We had to unplug everything, plug everything back in. And then I was able to log in and ask me a few different questions on the first initial setup. And now that is where we are at now it's going to be configuring this all out getting all of these settings correctly and doing this because i have zero idea on how this works or how it's well i know how it's supposed to work what it's supposed to do but getting it from zero to where i'm at now to getting it to i want to say 100 because you'll never be at 100 percent, but getting it going uh so here is where the adventure actually begins and i'll keep you guys in the loop as to how that goes i've put the home assistant kit uh down there which is where all my other bridges are uh, i have the lutron the akara the akara m2 hub philips hue and then i have one for my thermostat um which is kind of annoying and that's a different story, but I had to get a special bridge to make my thermostat um, be usable the way I want it to be. I couldn't get an Ecobee thermostat because of the wiring on my furnace itself. It's a two-stage 
one that talks to itself. I forget what it's called, so maybe I'll put this right here as well to give you an idea of what I'm talking about or why I couldn't use a the thermostat for that one, which I was pretty bummed out when I first moved into this house that I couldn't use the Ecobee thermostat because that is a thermostat that I did want to use here, but I digress. So it's all down there. It's gonna get a little sloppy down there. Um, maybe thinking of getting a shelf or something to kind of clean that up a little bit more uh, to make it look a little bit nicer, but I don't know. If for right now, it's fine. I'm not gonna think about it. It does what it's supposed to do. Needless to say, I'm gonna try not to spend too much time on getting this all set up, maybe a couple hours a day, maybe, I don't know. But I know it's gonna really consume a lot of my time, so I'm gonna try not to let it little bit by bit, not try to eat the whole pie at once. I don't know what that saying is, but I'm gonna take a little bites out of it all the time, every day, perhaps just to kind of keep it moving, keep it forward, uh, keep it moving forward. You know, small snowball rolls into a big snowball. So that's the plan, hopefully. But uh, with these type of things, I really just sometimes overdo it and just keep working and keep working and keep working on it before I know it's five hours later and here I am, right? But I'm gonna try not to let that happen. This will be more of a long-term project, trying to work it out and make it the way I want it to be. Yeah. So I'll keep you posted on how this goes. Thanks for watching. If you like videos like this, want to see more content like this, give it a nice thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. That would be great. I would love having you part of this community. Comments, questions, suggestions, anything at all, please put them down in the comments section below. And like always, keep on living in modern lifestyle through technology. Peace. Bye.